Good, huh? Oh, it's just. <laughs> Welcome to the Active Teaching Lab. I hope you're paying attention to the slides because I'm not going to go over them again, other than to say, uh, let's see, we've got the sheet at the end I'll tell you about. And today's about Canvas Commons. Yay! How many of you have used Canvas Commons? All right, very good. How many of you have, uh, that was too broad of a question. Let me ask you again, let's ask it again. How many of you have uploaded content to Canvas Commons? All right, how many of you have downloaded content to Canvas Commons? How many of you have browsed Canvas Commons? How many of you have clicked on Canvas Commons and then immediately ran away as fast <laughs> as you could? All right, good. How many of you don't know what Canvas Commons is? All right, excellent. We got a whole range here today. So we'll start off with, what do you want to learn today about Canvas Commons? Obviously, we can't cover everything about Canvas Commons. So what we try to do in the Active Teaching Labs is answer the questions in the room so that when you leave, you leave thinking, oh, I had my question answered. So. We'll go around the room and I'll write them on the board, topics to address, and then we're going to pull on the wisdom of the room to um, see if we can answer them. Anybody like to start? Sure. All right, way to volunteer the, someone else this time. <laughs> Good. Bobby. Um, how to best organize the assets that you pull in? Oh, good question. I would like to see um, what improvements have been made to Canvas Commons, if any, because I remember an issue in the past was you had to download something to see what it was. Yeah, so previewing, and in some ways that helps answer the question that Bobby has about how to organize it. If you don't download it, you don't have to organize it. All right, Kate. Oh, I don't know what Canvas Commons is. All right, so the basics, what is it? Yeah. Good. It's not the same as Canvas, right? Right. Okay. It's more common. <laughs> <laughs> Charles? <laughs> I'm also most interested in organizing assets. Organizing, good, good. Shoko? Um, I think previewing, easy way to preview. All right, good. Yep, I just learned about that this week. Dan? Here mostly to listen to the very good. Very interesting Canvas Commons. All right. AJ. I, I don't know what it is. I may use it depending on what we talk about today. All right. Naomi. Uh, barriers to entry and frustrations that I can um, help faculty members know what to talk about. Okay, good. Uh, Frustrations, question mark, question mark. Are there any? Yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret. Hi, I'm Margaret. I'm um, interested in organization. Okay, good. And JT. I just want to go to the. All right. Um, Haley, does she have a question? She says you are welcome to skip my introduction. Oh, well, She's okay. Here and listen to more basics. All right. Thanks. Heidi. I'm Heidi with English as a Second Language, and it's so unfamiliar to me that I don't even have a question. Mm -hmm. All right. Marjean. Uh, I also haven't looked at it in, since the Canvas's inception, 
when I was mad and we didn't have it. Okay, right. <laughs> so I haven't gotten over my madness yet. It was recently <laughs> turned on for campus, so it is still a newish thing. Andrew? Um, I'm interested in how other people are using it, and so far it kind of sounds like most people don't know about it. <laughs> when was it turned on? Last May? April? Last spring. It was the end of last semester. So it wasn't, it hasn't been around a lot, and I imagine a lot of people just got into their courses and they just didn't even notice it. <coughs> so it's super soft rollout? Yeah. I can't even remember. It was a pretty soft rollout. Yeah. Pretty soft rollout. Soft. We hope that nobody notices. <laughs> Lauren? I want to know why I would use it. <laughs> what for? <laughs> thought I was going to have that as an original question. What is? That's right. <laughs> and why? Yeah. That's good. Two good questions. And that's mine. That was your question? Yeah. Wait, let's do that. Yu Yen, why are you here today? And what would you like to learn? Oh, we went right in. All the way back to you. No pressure. Um, I really had. I heard. Uh, comment before and I didn't even like get to see what it looks like until I came to DCF. Yeah, so it's okay. a pretty recent thing I just want to learn about. All right, what is it? Why use it? Who can answer the question, what is it and why use it? Anyone? I will yes, Cliff. certainly give as much as I, I know and this is uh, that it is an easier way to share content um, among uh, among faculty both in the campus and even outside of the campus. It can also, it also is a great way to share content yourself between your own courses. So we've had faculty who'd often say, hey, I have a great quiz in this class. I want to move the quiz over there. There's no real way to do that except for exporting and importing something in the Canvas Commons. It's supposed to be a, a place where you can do that quicker and cleaner. Okay. That's all I know. That was How many of you have looked at other people's courses in Canvas? How many of you have seen an idea there that you're like, wow, how do you do this? And can you do this? How can you share it with me? How many of you have successfully tried to download and upload? OK, good. What is that process like? You export a common cartridge file from the export page, and then you um, import it into your course. And depending on how much stuff you're sifting through, it's uh, right. So you talk to the colleague and you say, hey, can you share something with me? And then they go into their course with settings and they export and you're like, I don't want the whole thing, I just want that one quiz or that one whatever. And so they whittle down and they do the sharing. And then you can um, download it and, and they can um, send it to you as a ICMSSS file or whatever that stands for. And then you have it on your computer and then you upload it and it's kind of a slow convoluted process in some ways. So Canvas Commons makes this easier. All they have to do in Canvas Commons is first of all there's a lot of content out there. Um, ooh, another question. How many of you found searching in Canvas Commons easy? Okay, that's zero for those watching at home. <laughs> they had a rating system on there where you could look at rated content and they recently took that off because only 8% of the content had been rated. And one of the people rating content was, I'm gonna rate anything that I use, that way it makes, me, makes it easier for me to find. So it wasn't really a rating system, it was just gaming the system. AJ. Oh. Sorry, I wasn't trying to stop here. So, yeah, as far as the why, I have a case scenario that may be comments, may not. Yep. Um, I have a student who is in one course, and I was telling him about this curated list of videos I have from another course. Uh -huh. Could I have brought that module of curated videos to the comments and said, go check out the comments, that's where it is? You are the owner of that, or the, of the course? Both courses. Yes. Yes, you could. Because I would use it for that. Instead, yep. I just made him an auditor of the earlier course. Yep. And I was like, check this out. But yep. wait, that felt weird to me. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. To be concerned about. Yep. That, is a, that is a way to do that. And when you share, you can share with the whole world or with 
just the Unison schools or with just BW Madison folks or just with yourself? Can you share with a certain Or with just uh, another individual? Andrew's doing a little head dance there. Oh, no. no. You can create a group, that's not an individual. Okay. It's still a group. Yeah. And it, and it has to be requested via a process. It's not something that end users can create. Okay. So that makes it way more complicated. It's the answer for all the cuts. But I could, like for me, I could create a, I could request a group for all our ITA students. Yeah. <clears throat> Anytime you request a group, remember you're asking somebody to do extra work. So, so here's the trick. You can request the group, but then you become owner of the group. And at that point, you can then add people to it or remove people. Okay. AJ's group of cool stuff. I'm so, starting to like this topic. So you know, what are they? What are the requirements? What's that? So you reply somehow. What are they? What frameworks are they? I have no idea what the parameters are for groups. Yeah, do we have a process for? You sure do. Is it <laughs> is it talk to the do it help desk and then get escorted or what is that? I am like? referring to our documentation because I don't honestly remember. There's a KB on requesting and managing a group. The request goes to a request form. That form asks for your name, your net ID, your preferred email address. Let me just call it. Test one, they're gonna love me. Teresa, rather. Mm. How much storage? Uh, storage, uh, there, it's uh, not, I don't think there's, there's, any, there's no storage associated with groups in Commons. So you can upload pretty much uh, whatever you want to Commons. Uh-oh. <laughs> 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 to be fair, you are responsible if you break the law, so. <laughs> uh, so then that is a constraint, I guess. It's kind of group name, and then your school, college, institute. So pretty basic info. Let me point out at this point that if you have not, um, on the very top of your sheet, already joined our Canvas course, I encourage you to do so because you'll get access to this interactive digital activity sheet, which is way more useful than the paper version that you have, because at the very bottom of that, we add things like notes and links that to, for example, that KB doc, um, so that if we don't have it already at the top, and we do have some KB docs, but I don't know if we have the KP doc to that one, <coughs> we can access it here and you can remember how to get back to it because you've got that little reminder there on your activity sheet. Duncan. Well, so my intended application was to create, actually, a question, can I archive a whole course there? Can you archive a whole course there? Just Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So and I'm share it only with yourself. Well, I would share it with my department. So you could do that as well if you make a group. Or you can share it with all of UW. My understanding about Canvas Canvas Commons is that it's not stored on. Correct, it's not stored here at Madison. It's stored with the structure. And they want people to store stuff on there so that it becomes a useful, rich resource. Therefore, ergo, um, put everything on there. Okay. Not everything. Are we going to charge this later for it? Yeah, you know. Always. Yeah. Probably, but okay. not yet. I mean, we're already paying them. Right, we are already paying them for this service, so. Okay. Oh. I don't think we're paying them extra, it's included with whatever deal we negotiated. Oh, we paid for this already, we'll come to <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't pay for it at the beginning, though, right? I mean, we, 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 were, well, we, we didn't adopt it we until a little bit later. Paid for it, we just didn't turn it on didn't until, it on. oh, until I see, okay. Because I knew that there was quite a bit of internal strife discussions. Well, and the use case here is, hey, I've got this course. Let me align it with your course. 
How do I do that? Well, you have to see what I'm doing. I have to see what you're doing. Well, that, that too. Right. Yeah, sharing. Yeah. Yeah. When you transfer ownership to, you know, get the course in cycles and structure, suddenly they got a new course in Canvas automatically made by the registrar. Yeah. That's a so blank slate. It's empty. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, because right now, if a new instructor wanted to get that content, there's there's only a couple of options. I mean, somebody would have to go into the old one, export an IMSCC file, or go into that course, add the instructor, now the instructor could, but either one. But this would be a way of just taking, hey, this is kind of a copy of the course, put it out in public well, space, whoever's teaching it next week. The, the new instructor is going to mess with it then? Sure, yep, sure, sure, sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, but just meaning I put it out there, you can pull it in yourself, in your, your new course show yourself, just easier. You can set up a whole set of version histories. This is the course from. That's, actually, that's the one I'm getting. I'm yeah. going to follow up with. Yep. And that way, when course the course rounds back to you, rotates back to you, you can be like, I had this awesome activity. Where did it go? They took it out. Let me go pull it back and update it. So we're getting into the why use it and what is it for, correct? Is anyone else, are there more questions on that vein? Does it seem like the best solution ever right now? <laughs> JT? What's the difference between functionally what's the difference between a blueprint course and a development page and a Canvas Commons within your own department? Okay. Because if it's so restricted, I don't know what the difference between what the advantages to Canvas Commons unless it really is just storage of the store. So blueprint course versus uh, an archived course on Canvas Commons. Anyone want to tackle that? I'm looking at Dan and Andrew. I don't really know what a blueprint course is. A blueprint, uh, the concept of blueprint is when you're going you're gonna to have like a parent, kind of a master version of the course in real time. And there's like five different TAs that are all teaching their version of the same course. And I want to maintain connectors. I oversee the entire thing. I have these 30 documents I want to push out to all five of those. Courses, so I don't have the power to kind of do that. So I set up a blueprint, and these are now ch children courses that have been pointed to this guy. But, but they are not exact copies. But because of that structure and the fact that these are five separate Canvas courses, the individual TAs have the ability to add their own stuff, to tweak some things around. You get a little bit of control over saying, "All right, you can add new and new assignments, but don't tamper with these assignments." You can so add the new blueprint courses. Blueprint has the module structure. You could you could set it up that way. So yeah, you push that out and tell the tell the, the TAs in those child courses you can't modify the modules. You can set that up. How does it handle the grading? These are sections. Um, uh, you know, each TA in their own Canvas course shell has sections that have their own students, have their own grade books. They do their stuff kind of independent of the pair of the the so it doesn't course. Roll up to the course. It doesn't roll up to like a master course. It has all of the students in one course. You know. You know what, I'm going to stop there, because I'm I, I, even as you say that, it's like, well, do I know that for sure, that they're not all in the master course? Yeah, that'll hit you when you're learning. There are cases, those, those, those KV docs on blueprint courses and how to use them. And I know some people yeah, in the room are also users of blueprint courses and might be able to have a conversation with you as well on that. Naomi? I'm curious about transferability across institutions. If we have an LTI integration, or another school has an LTI integration that allows you know, for certain kinds of embedded content, does that then transfer in any sort? Like, is it just going to be like a broken course if we have, like, somebody we're trying to borrow from uses H5P and we don't have a contract, or like, you know, I have our special account books in that in my Canvas course? Yes, it will break. Okay. It depends. Oh. Yeah. So if your Crossbug, for example, is literally open to anyone on the web, then the links that are transferred in the thin common cartridge through commons will actually work in the new course. It'll just be in its a little box. Yes. Like it's a iframe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Same with like Google Docs. Uh, Which break anyway, so maybe just forget you that. You know, I actually haven't tested it with Google Docs. Okay. I've only tested it with Crossbooks. Awesome. So that's the only one that I can really speak to. But yeah. right. um, I imagine that, I don't know, if you have, if if you're working with someone who has an H5P license, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I can probably only speak to Crossbooks. Yeah. If it's something that's publicly available, that's like Crossbooks of that thing, then that would probably also work. Yeah. 
If, however, you are using a Canvas course that you've downloaded using a CMSS package or whatever, and that course used, for example, the ARC video service rather than Kaltura, yeah. that would probably not work because we do not have a license for ARC. So, now known as Canvas Studio, they've changed it, okay. Good to keep track of on sort of a little side thing. It doesn't affect us right now because we don't, we haven't signed on to it. All right, where I thought you were gonna go with your question, JT, was with the different course structures in your, in picking a course, how do you decide which course you wanna pick in a sandbox course? Because to get to the question of how do I organize assets? It's only one T in assets, right? Yeah, sorry about that, everybody. Um, it's a pain to organize because if you download a course and you bring it into your existing course, all of their files then get intermixed with your files. So big warning on the activity sheet, be careful when downloading and also preview carefully. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with course files, and I did this for the course that I'm teaching right now. I was like, this is a cool course. I'm gonna download the whole thing. And then I had to spend as much time as I had spent up to that point getting rid of files that no longer applied to me. I just wanted a couple of things. So by previewing, you can pick and choose exactly what assets in that course you want to favorite and then use. How many of you have used favoriting and immediate integration via the rich text editor, rich content editor, in your class course. This is cool. I'm going to show you this. And I'm going to remember to share my screen as I do this. All right. So here I am in Canvas. And I'm like, what's going on in Commons right now? It's actually development. So I clicked on the little Commons link over there. And voila, Canvas Commons. And I want to do a search. And I want to search for faculty development stuff, right? Because that's a really interesting topic. So here are a bunch of courses and content that is shared that has the tag faculty development on it. <coughs> and it's sorted right now by most relevant. I can say I want the ones that most people find useful and therefore they favorite in it, right? Maybe. So there they are. There's an Indiana University's one and well, several other ones. Ooh, this one looks really good because it's got a video game on it. And this levels of learning XP. All right, so <laughs> somebody's gamified this. I'm really interested in gamification. I'm going to go check this out. I can click on it, and oh, also I noticed that it's been downloaded 213 times, and nine people have favorited it. Okay, that's useful. I'm going to take a look at it. Very tempting blue button over here to import and download. <laughs> I'm going to restrain myself and not do that yet because I just want to look at it and check things out. There's a level up one. Okay, cool. I can get badges, coins, da 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 da. da. Ooh, organization, kind of neat. Good, uh, good Nintendo flavor here. So let's go look at one of these pages. Yep, broken link. To answer your question, who had the question about, namely about things breaking? Ah, if it's broken there, it's broken here. And we don't know why. And we don't know why, necessarily, no. So, here's some information. I can add this to my favorites, and I will add the whole course at this point. So now when I go up to my favorites, up on the top here, boom, there it is. I should, have gone, I should have done this the other way around. If 
if I'm in my active teaching lab course, opening this up in a new tab for those of you who aren't following my screen stuff, and I go click on edit, underneath our friend, the little down carrot here, the little blue one that looks very um, similar to the Vimeo one, don't get the wrong down arrow, I see at the bottom here's Commons Favorites. I can import, without doing that whole course download, individual pieces that I've favorited. Oh, just favorite. Now, if you followed what I did, you will notice that I favorited the course. And you cannot put a whole course into a rich text editor, content editor window. All you can do is, if it were a, an embedded document, and I had fit the favor to that, or a quiz or something like you can do individual pieces. So if I click on Commons Favorites, it's going to say there is nothing here except for that one image that you favorited yesterday. Come on, tech. In theory, once that wheel stops spinning, it should come up with the one. There it is, the one image that I have because I just looked for this one image. So you can share not just a whole course, but individual assets like AJ, that list of cool resources that you had to Canvas Commons. Images, documents, what are some of the other ones that are on the activity sheet? Okay, but how do you favorite just a single asset? Let's go figure that out because I was hoping that I'd be able to do that here, but I was not. Let's go back into here. I know that one way to do this is, you saw that I clicked on the filter type. I can say, I only want to look at documents or images or whatever. I don't know if you can look at the whole course and then when you're looking at that course, you can find an individual asset within that course. I'm seeing head shaking, no, so. That either indicates that other people don't know either. It seems like every I just favorite a course and then I'm looking at a page in the course. I still I see a remove from favorites that suggests everything got favorited. But if I look at my favorites and I just want to look at the images within that favorite, it's just the one image that I that I saw. I'm looking let me search for faculty development within, not favorites, but with, yeah, within, oh, let's do modules or assignments, no, quizzes. It's a bad tag. What's a better tag than faculty development? Professional development? General, uh, mathematics. Well, that's too general. Algebra. Algebra. <laughs> All right, wow, there's not a lot there. Let's keep doing audio, documents, pages, courses. Okay, I got too specific. I went from, we went from too general to too specific. Seems like algebra is not that specific. All right, so here is, but I don't have courses. But it's a course. Oh, I did have courses. I want picture. Did you picture work? I did uh, assignments and Japanese and actually came up with something. What did you find? I found a self-introduction assignment and uh, an extra credit assignment. Were you able to insert it with the PC? I didn't want to go so far as to insert it, but I did get it to search that. So I chose, assign I did Japanese, I chose filter by assignment and undergraduate. And that's how I came up with something. I oh, I think I was looking at. Yeah, then, yeah. My keyboard's yeah, not working yeah. at this height. And then uh, filter, I did undergraduate, and I did assignment. Yeah. All right, I figured <coughs> out what I did. I was looking, see this little line right here? I was looking under favorites and searching within my favorites. Oh, oh. Mm. Gotcha, good guess. 
Yeah, that's true. There's something, something in algebra. algebra. You would think. <laughs> Otherwise, this is a totally useless resource at all. You can all go home right now because there's nothing on it. And I just, and, and Laura, uh, Lauren just said that, uh, she didn't want to actually download this stuff. And that's totally understandable when you're kind of in a, in a searching phase. But if you, if, you, if you don't already have a sandbox or if you want a separate sandbox for just this purpose, you know, let us know. If you don't know that process for requesting sandboxes, let us know. Because um, that's what I do. Just go get a sandbox and then just start practicing the download, see what it looks like, how does it act, how easy is it, can I find the stuff. On your app, because otherwise it's a huge pain. You download stuff and it intermixes with your own files, and then you've got to organize and such. Yeah. Whatever you do, do not open up your live course for the semester <laughs> and check out Canvas Commons and start downloading things to that because it will become a disaster for you. <laughs> At one point in researching the topic, I remember it saying something like, things won't be published or won't be downloaded as published. That is not true. They will be published, and all of your students will see them, and there will be assignments that you didn't make that were in this other course. So use a sandbox, test things out there, and then, if you like it, move it from, from that. Duncan. How, what, what is to prevent them from changing it? Uh, is there anything, or are you subject to broken links? You are subject to broken links. I believe that these <coughs> are up there at the owner's will. And I can stop sharing my content immediately, or I can change it. Uh, when I do it, it the way you're suggesting. Do I have to download it first and then? No. Uh, Once it's previewed, off to you would download it into your course. Thank you. Let me let uh, me bring this back up here. And then, if it disappeared from Commons, it doesn't matter because you, you got your copy by then. There's there's no connector. There's no. It's not a. Uh, what's the word? It's not a con umbilical cord connected. If I go through this mechanism, does this end up in my file structure somewhere? Um, I, I, <clears throat> yes. Anything that you go through that rich content editor gets downloaded and added to your files. Now, that's better than downloading the whole course and having all the courses added to the file. It's good if you can just what download the one piece. Files. What's that? Folder in my file. And you know it's... it's It'll go into whatever your appropriate folder area is. So for example, if you download an assignment, it'll show up under assignments. If you download a module, it'll show up under modules. If you download an image, it'll show up under course files, images. Within your Canvas course, right? I mean, when you Within, say... Yeah. What file folder you you so are? Not subject to broken links. Download to have my stable copy. You have your stable copy, yeah. I, Someone uh, else can they can go remove the whole course. They can remove it. Doesn't problem. matter. You've already got your copy. Yeah. Which is the whole kind of the whole point of the yeah, beginning. Yeah, it's yeah, just so a quick way to share hope, stuff. So, yeah. so you could you could conceivably put something up on Commons for the sole purpose of letting your fellow instructor copy you it. and then just remove it when you're done because because you don't want it to be out there anymore. So. Right. Let me step through another um, quick thing. So I found another image under Japanese, not assignments, but images. And I'm going to click Add to Favorites just to finish up this thing that I want to try to finish up here. It is now added to my favorites. I can go to my favorites. And there it is that I've added it. And now if I go into my course, I'm going to redo this. And it should show up right away. There is my narrow fuzzy thing. Wherever my cursor is here, I will click on it. It will show up, I think, at the very top. Boom, there it is. And now it is in my course files as well, nice. which I have turned off. Um, I wonder if I leave this, if it will stay there or not. We'll find hmm. out. That's interesting. But yep, there it is, Nero Fuzzy. Because it's already done the labor of. It's already done the labor of downloading, so it automatically gets added to your files. <laughs> this can be very useful. It would be more useful if I could open up a whole course and say, I just want this one piece, <laughs> instead of just searching for pieces of content. 
and I don't know how to do that. So if somebody wants to hop in there and try to figure that out, that would be awesome. You mean like, so you get quizzes and assignments and media files that you can I want to be browsing your course and say, this is image I want to take, and this assignment I want to take, and this whatever I want to take, without you saying, all right, you can, without you having to, as an instructor who's sharing your content, say, I want to do this image individually, and I want to do this image individually, and I want to do this assignment individually, and I don't know if there's an, a way to do that, but it would sure be a lot more helpful if, if there was, well, right? This, this image you just pulled down. This image that, that I just pulled, in a course that was embedded in the course, and it was shared as its own thing when I did a search for Japanese images. Man, my keyboard is just not working. Oh, I just got to There it is again. Let me try this again. In fact, the development, now that I'm not in my shared or in my preview things, I just want to look at images that are shared. So within faculty development, only one person has shared an image <coughs> of a smoky panda. <laughs> and that is not, like there are millions of images shared, but this is the only one that has been explicitly image shared under faculty development. Does that make sense? Can you walk us through, sorry. No, please. The sharing process? Yeah. Sure. Universe, how we now upload something. Yeah. All right, so here I am, back in my course. There's the home page. And you'll see that I have this import from Commons option here. But we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about sharing two Commons. Um, an easy way to do that is if I go to the edit page. Oh, that is not what I want to do. If I go to the settings page. There's my course. And under settings, I can click on share to comments. I believe that when I click on this, it says, is it to update? So do you want to rewrite over what I've already shared? Because I have already <coughs> shared. Which one are you doing? Active Teaching Lab Sandbox, already shared out there. Who can use this? Is it just for me? Is it just for all of UW Madison? Are there consortiums? And Unison is listed under there if I click on that. Or is it public for any common users? And then I can have the public license set up there, add additional information. Where is your group? I want to share them. Would groups be under a consortium? I don't know where groups are. You know, I want, is it? I, uh, the red navigation bar, there's the groups item right below courses. No, that's for putting people in That's groups. course groups. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Uh, I don't have a group, so I wonder if I did have a group, if it would show up here. Yeah, I have a checkbox that says select groups, and then if you check that checkbox, all the other checkboxes of all the groups that I part of. Yeah, it's like here. Select so groups. Yeah, it pops up. And you can yes, it. so I don't have a group, so it's not. we're not seeing it here. Oh, you're about to share it. Right now, it looks like I'm about to share the whole course, right? So let me see if there's ways to say, oh no, I only want to share one module of that. Version notes, after teaching lab. I can set the grade level here. I can add an image here. No, this is the whole course. This is not going to let me take an individual piece, it looks like. You can, well. You may have been about to go into this, but to share like a page. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Step me through that, because um, I just so just go to a page. I'm gonna go to it. cancel. Go back to my dashboard. Back to labs. I'm in this page right now. <laughs> so go to the kebab menu, in the towards the upper right. All right. Everybody recognize that the little. Is that what that's called? Yes. 
There's the hamburger menu, which is the three lines, and there's the kebab menu, which are the things not on a stick, on an invisible stick. And I don't know what other food-related menus there are, but there should be some great ones, right? Is there one for the ellipses? Does that have a cool? I think it's just ellipses. That's kind of a boring name, though. That would also be a kebab, though. Yeah, a, a horizontal kebab, vertical kebab. That's the frying kebab versus the Kebab. All right, so here we are, and I have to edit, correct? Oh, sorry, there's kebab menu, right? 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 Oh, and now I can click on Shared Commons. And when I click on Shared Commons for this one page, it gives me other things. Who? Metadata, license. I can add an image to it. But it's the whole page. So if you go to Files, can you do the same thing? I'm not sure. So I imagine that since we can do it with the whole course, and since we can do it with an individual page, we could probably go to Files. Yep. There's my TT0 image. But let me. Oh, there's the kebab. There's the at the end of it. Share to comments. Boom. Oh. So, the, so the answer is. Oh, yeah. Is it in modules? No. In modules, we can also share modules to. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm going to look for a kebab. I'm going to guess that you look for the kebab. And there is Share to Commons. Booyah. Now, there's how I share my module. Within the pages, I can also do the pages this way. Shared modules. That makes things a little bit more. Just within modules, you can share the pages from within the modules window as well. So you don't have to search through your course files just in case you aren't using great naming conventions and they get confusing. Now, does anybody know, I mean, if I share a module, does it trickle down to share all of the components that are found within that module? Like files. Does it inherit? Or would you have to go through manually, hit the share button, and <coughs> close and make it Excellent. Thank you. Sorry? It does package the modules. Yeah. So that means you don't have to share them all in your tools. Gotcha. Now, I want to go back to files here because we're in this fun exploratory place. So you can just have the share the stuff module and just keep all of them. I add stuff, now I change the module. You just reshare the module? No, I'm reshare it, I'm just not for the original. Is it auto update? Hmm. So, <laughs> I, I want to make sure that I understand what you're asking. You, you've got a module that you have shared the commons. Do you then modify the module? You, if you do want, if you want to update the learning object in commons, you can just do the same function. Just, I mean, it's that's right, because you remember how it would ask you. That's right. Yeah, that exactly. first button so is, do you want to overwrite? Right. 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 It's so it's right. a snapshot. Okay. So yeah. if you have to push the change up the canvas comments if you want that. I have bad news. I created a folder thinking I'll put all of my images into the folder, mm -hmm. and then I'll just share the whole folder full of images to comments rather than sharing no. each one individually to comments. Yeah. But you can't share mm -hmm. file. Going back to this. Update thing. Does that mean you can also? I maybe caught onto this. You can put versions of different learning objects. Like here's my module from 2015. Here's the sure. same module from 2016. Yes. But John, you could have made a page and just then used the files button and just clicked all those files, including. I could have inserted the page, mm -hmm. but then that person on Commons, mm -hmm. when they do a search for faculty development images. They wouldn't see that. They would see the yeah, page of images. They would have all images, but they wouldn't detect. They wouldn't well, I, I would say, I mean, if what, what, what you, I, I would want to test that out, right? Because the page does not have the images. The page would only have hyperlinks to a thing that's over in files. No, the, right. the images so, would be downloaded yeah, with the page. Well, I'm, I'm hearing it's all just packaged. And, 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 you know, yep. It's not structured for. So if you tag the page. If you had a hyperlink, yeah. if you inserted it as a hyperlink, no. If it's in the course files, yes. 
Well, I'm saying that both of those things can be true. It's in the course files, but when you go and you're building a page and you're using that that nav that toolbar on the right hand side that lets you quickly insert links. Yeah. Never mind. Okay, I'm getting confused now because I see. But if I inserted, if I embedded an image, if you embed the image, image it from CNN.com, gotcha. That image embedded I, as I, a hot link that changes want, every day or whatever, whatever would not be downloaded as part of it. Right, but if, they, but if you had a local file that was linked to If I had a local it file. Like packaged up. So you could tag the entire page with active teachers or yep. Japanese or whatever you wanted. Yep. And it would show up if, if the person searched for pages. Mm -hmm. If the person searched for oh, images. Pages, it would show up for yeah. All right. We're getting really into the nitty gritty <laughs> here. For those of you who have never used Canvas Commons before, this may sound more advanced, and it is. It's more advanced. I'm learning about a lot of it right now. So, what other questions? All right, so we talked a little bit about um, organizing the assets and how dangerous it is to move it into your live course. And now you should get a sandbox course, and you found the link to that sandbox course on our activity sheet page, right? Activity sheet, good. And JT has a question. Stop sharing your screen. Haley has a question. Stop sharing your screen. Stop sharing my screen, okay. John has a question, good. Boop, stop sharing. All right, so we're back to the room view. Lauren. So I have a question that's kind of the reverse of Naomi's. So um, I have um, in my subnet availability to certain LTIs, okay? I imported, not from comments, but I imported a course, like the full course, mm -hmm. from a time when those LTIs weren't available. Oh. And when I did that, then that new import didn't have access to the LTIs. It had the all of the old stuff. So my question is, if I were importing from the Commons, and that Commons course didn't have H5P, for example, but I do, Just will I not sense. have access to H5P if I'm using that course? No. If you import a course, and that course was created without H5P, and you import it into an area that does have H5P, you can add whatever H5P content to it. Because that didn't work for when I imported my own this course was a from question. one. <laughs> it, I was importing my own course from the year before we had access to the LTI, uh -huh. and it was actually done on a Madison server. Mm -hmm. Then, when I got the LTIs that I wanted on the system server, I imported my Madison course into my system course, mm -hmm. and it would not allow me to have access to my system LTIs when I went to external tool. It's not there. All Even right. though I moved it from, and I'm, I'm thinking of before. Madison as sort of my commons at sure. the time, right? right? And that was and a course export so file? Like it, it was a course export and then a course import. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I suppose that like the configuration actually came with that old. Right, Explain. and so that's why right. I'm wondering if you do that from Commons, is the configuration of that Commons course going to then be imported into your space and you wouldn't have access to whatever things you might? Yeah, I mean, maybe if you're importing an entire course. Right. But into a course? Or yeah, yeah, into a new course. Into a, so into a new course. course. Yep, you have right. a blank sandbox course. You have a blank sandbox course, you import a whole course. Yeah. And, the, and, and then are you going to end up having the configuration of the comments course and not the configurations that you want in your own? I, I would suspect that you would have the configuration of the comments <laughs> course, and then you would have to you would have to reset up the configuration. You know, like, is there a way to do that? Like yeah. in, in yeah. instead of you have to go you have to go to your course settings and then fucks with the I think it's called third party tools or something like that. But you can yeah. Because I wasn't able to get the apps in there. Yeah, you, you have to reset up your, your LTI configuration for that course specifically. Oh, for that course specifically, got yeah. it, okay. But you could also, couldn't you import all the, I don't know what content, you could import all the modules, like one by one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is for an yeah. external LTI tool. But, I mean, no, but the modules have the L you have a new one set up with the LTI correctly, mm -hmm. so now you import the modules from the course. 
Would if you, yes, if you were if you were only doing pieces of it, then you would maintain your configuration. But if you're doing the whole course, that's why I was wondering. Just yeah, we're still in advanced land. Okay. We are, yeah, we're still in advanced land. Now the next Sorry. thing is, <laughs> if you want to really explore a course, this is what it looks like. If I just I have this empty sandbox course, it was actually not empty, and I'll show you that in just a little bit. But it didn't have much in there. I didn't care about it. It's sandbox 11, so it's one that I've just <laughs> thrown stuff into. And I imported from Commons this Growing with Canvas, which is a uh, student point thing where you can earn badges and go through the levels of introduction, planting, nurturing, sprouting, flowering, and harvesting. That's it's kind of a game-based grow your own canvas course. Kind of cool, right? So I was like, I want to explore this a little bit more. I imported it. It came out this way immediately. I have not touched it yet. You will notice that the modules are all published. How do I copy templates into my course? Of course it's not because it came not published, but everything that was imported this way came and it's all published. Now, there are, if I look at files, I believe I have some files in here already. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But they would be in here as well. So it could get really messy. So a blank sandbox course, again, this is, can you tell that this is a point of really reinforcing, get a blank sandbox course. Well, it also puts your files in folders. Good practice, yeah, that's, yeah. this is nicer. Very good. I have a question about developing for commons. So <clears throat> would it make sense to have a sandbox course to build something that you know you're going to put in commons and use in multiple places? Or does it make more sense, or just as much sense, to do it in a living course and then share it to commons? Like, what are people's practices with that kind of thing? I it probably depends on like if you like what you want to do. So like if you're if you want to have like a version control kind of system where it's like I'm saving the twenty the fall twenty nineteen version of my course to Commons, then you would probably just do it in the active course that you have. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you were building something to be packaged and like spread out to multiple courses in the future, I would start with the empty sandbox. Okay. Let me also tell you what I did here. Um, when I shared the active teaching lab course yesterday two commons in prep for this, there was one of my modules that you should all watch if you haven't watched it already. Oops, no, it's in fall. There it is, the one with the apple. So this was two weeks, was it last week? It was last week already, Marcus Brower um, presentation at WID on inclusive teaching. You should all go click on that and watch it. It's fantastic. Um, he asked us not to share this outside of UW Madison. So yesterday I was in Canvas Commons and I was like, all right, let me see if this works. I will share this. And I was like, oh, but wait, I cannot share this with the whole world. So if I had taken a sandbox course, taken this out, put everything else back into that, then I could have shared that one. So if there are pieces of your course that you're like, you know, I just can't share this one. I want to share the rest of it. That would be a really good use case for creating the sandbox course in order to share content up. Choco. Is there any limits on number of sandboxes you can have? So when I wrote this activity sheet and I said, we recommend getting a sandbox course, I <laughs> took a risk there because I don't know the answer to that question. I know that they're it's manually a, created. It's a complicated answer. Um, I make them. There you go. <laughs> so no limits. So actually, well, if you use the little button on the little thing that John no, says, I'm on that system and stuff. then I don't have anything with you. I'd say it's unlimited. <laughs> I think it's unlimited for you. But okay. but Talk everybody, to I, don't, I, I, I don't get that Talk many requests. Carlos. So so and they're and they're easy to they're they're relatively easy to churn out. So I don't I don't mind. Just I have like fifteen. <laughs> yeah. No, like Twenty. I have like fifteen sandbox courses. <laughs> The question is that one gigabyte storage space. Mm -hmm. So if you download from comments, does that take up that space? Yes, or I'll leave. Yeah. So that's why you don't want to download the whole thing. 
Well, it's one big byte end per course. So if you have 20 sandbox courses. Oh. That's right, that's right, that's right. Okay. Good, good catch, good call. How do I request a sandbox? Hey, look. You know, it's, <laughs> you know, actually, we're going to, I'm going to have a meeting right after this one uh, upstairs, the Learning W team. And this has been one of my one of my questions. Is like, it's not as easy to find request a sandbox as you might think. So it's out there. It's, there's two different KB docs that will have a link to it. If you were to go KB search on Canvas request or Canvas sandbox, it'll get you to that that same space. It's a, it's a Google form. You fill it out, send it, and it gets routed to you. Right here. Yeah, uh, you can still go fill out a form. Because <laughs> that way it's tracked and we've got... Yeah, it's tracked. Yeah, it's tracked. Yeah, it's tracked. So what do you want? I hate those. I know, I know, I know. Even as a user, do you break them? No, I have okay. different Google accounts. I cannot get any emails. Oh, yeah, I, I feel... I, I, different topic. <laughs> <laughs> Two more minutes left. What haven't we talked about? Oh, any frustrations? I think we ran into several of them here. <laughs> Um, organizing assets, previewing, we've looked at previewing, I believe. And when you said frustrations, it was also barriers to entry. I like that phrase of like, if faculty are going to use this, you know, what's the best way to get them warmed up to it and, ex and exposed and jumping on the wagon? Or do we want them jumping on the wagon? Wow. <laughs> I would say previewing is a great way to Can't help you. start exploring. Yeah. Download only after you've got that sandbox. We've made that point really clear now, right? And, but there's information up there. And use the favoriting to, like bookmarks, to find stuff. Any last questions? AJ. You mentioned tagging a few times, and you searched for tags. Is yes. Is when you share a Yes, when I sh yes, I'm not going to open it up again, but there are, in the description, you can add the title of it, you can add a description of it, and then right below that, there are tags that you can add. Okay. I don't know if there are any best practices for tagging right now in Canvas Commons. I added faculty development, hit return, added teaching, hit return. So it's one per return. All right, on your way out, if you could hit the uh, hit a couple of check boxes on our on our purple sheet, things that you found useful, not useful, helpful, all that sort of stuff, that would be fantastic. Thank you very much. Grab some more fruit and. Lemonade and nice tea on your way out. <laughs>